Hello, everyone. I hope everyone is doing well. I'd like to share with you now a brief Dvar Torah on uh, the Parshiot that we normally would be reading tomorrow. One of the unfortunate uh, aspects of this situation is that without coming together to Shul and Shabbos, without having a regular laning Kriyasa Torah, the reading of the of the weekly Parsha, so the Parsha Tashavu is losing out a little bit. We're not hearing the Parsha. We're not thinking about it. We're not uh, discussing it as much as we normally would. So I'd like to share with you now a thought on the Parsha, really not focused, though, on our unique situation, but just something to learn together um, uh, about the Torah reading of this week. The Parsha of this week are Vayakal Pekudei, which are the last two Parshiot and the five Parshiot that discuss the construction of the Mishkan, the tabernacle, in the wilderness. And in many ways, these Parshiot are repeating things that we already know. In Parshiot Truma and Tetzava, Hashem commands, instructs us to build and construct the Mishkan and its vessels. And in Vayakal Pekude, we read about an accounting of those vessels and how they actually were constructed and made and fashioned. However, Chazal, our sages, notice a difference between these different sections of the Torah. In Truma, initially, Hashem commands the Jewish people to construct the vessels, the kalim, the aron, the shulchan, menorah, etc. And only then does he instruct them to build the walls and building and courtyards of the Mishkan. However, in Kitisa Vayakal Pekude, the order is reversed to some degree. And in some places, we read about the construction of the outer courtyard, the tabernacle, the building itself, and only then about the actual construction of the vessels. And so the Gemara explains and resolves that difference as follows. It says that initially Hashem shared the command to Moshe, and then Moshe shared the command with Bitzalel, the chief architect of the Mishkan. And Moshe instructed Bitzalel to first build the vessels, and only then build the Mishkan, the tabernacle itself, focusing on what was most important, most holy, the vessels. But B'tzalel responded to Moshe, quoted in Rashi, B'tzalel said, but the Chizeh Darko Shel Olam, is that the normal way that one would build a home? You can't put together the furniture if you do not yet have the building. And so B'tzalel said, perhaps Hashem really said to you to first build the Mishkan, the tabernacle, the building, and only then construct and fill it with the vessels. And indeed, Moshe says, B'tzalel, incredible. That is what Hashem told me. You must have been there in the shadows, overhearing God, and that is why his name is B'tzalel, B'tzal Kel, in the shadow of God. Now, it's not actually clear if Moshe Rabbeinu somehow forgot or misunderstood Hashem, or even purposely tested B'tzalel if he would figure out the right way to do it. So I'd like to share with you a thought of perhaps why there was this miscommunication, whether it was by mistake or on purpose. Why was it important for there to be some ambiguity in the instructions and for B'tzalel to figure it out on his own? Again, as we mentioned, we would only read two Parsha this week. In Parsha Pekude, I encourage you to look at it. You will see the refrain is, Kasher Tziva Hashem, just as God commanded. Each article is listed and said it was made. Kasher Tziva Hashem, Kasher Tziva Hashem. Everything was done exactly as commanded, exactly as God said. This is not a golden calf they made on their own. But in Parshat Vayakel, there are other phrases that are the refrain. And they are kol nadiv lev, everyone of generous heart, everyone who wanted to donate, who volunteered, who were not commanded, but gave because they wanted to. And also, everyone who is wise of heart, that each person who was artistic, each person who was skilled, worked on the Mishkan, worked on the vessels, and fashioned them to some degree with their insight, with their skill, using their imagination, their sense of beauty. And so we have these two aspects which are really opposites but complemented one another. It was important for the Mishkan on the one hand that it should be built according to the commandments and instructions of Hashem, Kasher Tziva Hashem. And yet Hashem also, He did not want it to be merely instructions that they put together like they're putting together something from Ikea. Hashem wanted it to be that there was room 
for the Jewish people to partner with him, to use their own ingenuity, their own skills, for them to be creative, for them to have their own input to what the Mishkan would be, with their own Nidivu Lev, with their own generosity, with their own Chachmat Lev, with their own wisdom and insight and skill. And that is a very fine line, a very hard balance to achieve. But that is what Hashem wanted in the Mishkan, and that is what He wants throughout the Torah for every Jewish person. On the one hand, we live lives that are kasher tziva Hashem, that must be as Hashem commanded, following halacha, following tradition, but also that is filled with nedivut and chachmat leiv, with our own generosity, with our own creativity, with what makes meaning for us. And we have to figure that out. Just as B'Tzalel did. That is perhaps why Hashem, even in the basic instructions of the order, there was a command, there was an order, God had something in mind, but he also wanted to not fully reveal it and that B'Tzalel should figure it out on his own, to use his own insight, his own thinking, his own creativity. And that is what we are all called to do, communally and individually. We have already been incredibly, ourselves, our own community, Jewish communities across the world have been so creative at this time, figuring out new ideas, new ways of doing things, new ways of learning and davening and connecting to people. And so this idea is very important now, but it's very important always. And this is something that we will take from this experience, to not always do things in the exact same way, to always look at things with a new eye, to try to be creative, to try to live lives that balance both of these principles, to live a life that one can say was kasher tziva Hashem, as God commanded, fulfilling those commands and instructions, and also a life that is filled with nidivut and chachmat lev, that we share our own generosity, our own creativity, and that way, partner with Hashem, just as Moshe and Betzalel did with the Mishkan.